In this video we're going to look at power functions of the form x to the 1 over n. In other words, where we have a fractional exponent with the numerator always being 1. So, for example, x to the 1 half, x to the 1 third, x to the 1 fourth, x to the 1 fifth, etc. So, two different types. Consider the parent function f of x equals x to the 1 over n where n is even. So, x to the 1 half, x to the 1 fourth, write those x to the 1 half, x to the 1 fourth, x to the 1 sixth. Anytime the denominator here is even, they will all have the same basic shape. They all have the same shape as the square root function. Remember, x to the 1 half is the exact same thing as taking the square root or the square root of x. So they all have that same basic shape like this. And their domain is always 0 to infinity. And the range is also 0 to infinity for all of those. So when you have an even uh, denominator here, so 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 sixth as your exponent, they all have the same basic shape. Then consider the parent function f of x equals x to the 1 over n power, where n is odd. So for example, x to the 1 third, x to the 1 fifth, x to the 1 seventh, it doesn't matter. They all have the same basic shape. So they all look like the cubed root function. Remember, raising to the one-third power is the same thing as taking the cubed root. So they all have this kind of flattened S shape like this. It's not perfect, but it looks something like that. And the domain will be all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. And same thing for the range for any time your denominator is odd. So those are the two basic types we'll be looking at. Let's look at some examples next. All right, so now we're going to graph some transformations of these. And in all of these examples, um, we'll uh, first be looking for is the uh, denominator odd or even. So in example one here, you see it's even. So it'll have the square root shape to it. And then we'll work with the transformation from there. So we need to do a little work here on this one. We need to factor out this negative that's inside there and raise that to the one half and subtract the one there. So all we did is we took out that negative sign there so that um, we can really see what's going on and the transformations for these are the same as every other function we've worked with all year. So this uh, negative uh, right here is going to reflect uh, it's only working with the x here so it's going to make the x's off opposite so it'll reflect over y reflect over y and then this plus 5 inside here with x will move it opposite of the sign so it'll be left 5 and then this negative 1 out here goes up and down with the sign so that would be down 1 and then it is the 1 half um, exponent there so it's going to have that shape of the square root graph uh, like all even denominators have, just like we looked at previously. So uh, the anchor point would normally be here at 0, 0, so we need to move that uh, left 5 down 1, so it would be right here at negative 5, negative 1. And then because it's reflected over the y-axis, instead of going back this way, it's going to go back that way from this anchor point, so right here like this. And that's all that we really need there. It says give the domain range, so the domain is from negative infinity to negative 5, including negative 5. That's domain. And the range is going to be from negative 1 to positive infinity. All right, let's look at example 2 next. All right, let's look at example 2. So it says graph the transformation, negative 3x to the 1 -fifth power plus 2, give domain range. So we notice that it has an odd degree, uh, an odd denominator there. So it has the S flattened out S shape like that. And then we'll look at the transformation. So this negative in front is in front of the whole function. So that makes the Y's opposite. So that'll be a reflect over X. We have this plus 2 out here, which moves it up and down with the sign. So up 2. 
it does have this three which will stretch it vertically by three but uh, we aren't really too concerned with that when we're graphing these uh, it would change the shape a little bit it would stretch it and same thing back on this one we didn't address that but it did have did have a vertical stretch of two but we didn't worry about that because as far as the anchor points we're working with with these that doesn't uh, really change anything that we're noting on the graph so with that said normally remember these are uh, if it has an odd uh, denominator it has this flattened S shape and it goes through the origin like that normally. So this one is reflected over the x-axis, so it will actually be going this way now, like that, and it's up two. So instead of an anchor at zero, zero, it's an anchor at zero, comma, two, and then it has its uh, flattened out S shape like that. So that's the way that one would look. And then the domain is still all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers as well. Negative infinity, you could also say negative infinity to infinity for both as well. Alright, let's look at example 3 next. Okay, example 3 and 4, it says write the transformation functions that produce these graphs. So you can see example 3 is going to be uh, x to the 1 half power because of its shape, and this will be x to the 1 third power. So any of these that I give you where you're given the graph, if it's this shape, it's going to be x to the 1 half this shape x to the one third. It's not going to be x to the one fifth or x to the one fourth, anything like that. It's either x to the one half or x to the one third when I give you the graph. So we need to address the transformations first. So normally it should be up like this for x to the one half, so it's reflected over x. So we'll write that reflect over x. Then uh, it normally is anchored here at 0, 0, so it's left 1, 2, 3, so left 3, and then up 2. This point right here is left 3, up 2 from the origin. So we need to write a function that's reflected over the x-axis, left 3, and up 2. So we'll put the negative in front. It's in front of the whole function because it's reflected over the x, making the y's opposite. And then to go left 3, we'll have a... Uh, plus 3 inside the parentheses here, raise that all to the 1 half power, and then to move it up to, we'll have a plus 2 out here. So f of x equals that right there would be the answer to number 3. Now for number 4, so we can see the shape, it's going to be x to the 1 third power, and it's not reflected in any way because it has the standard shape that it starts with. It's going the correct direction. Uh, no reflections there. And then it's normally anchored at 0, 0, so it's down 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll write that, down 4, and right 2. So we need to write the function, so it's x to the 1 third, down 4, right 2. So right 2 would be x, subtract 2 in parentheses, raised to the 1 third power, down 4, subtract 4 out here. And that is it for that one, so f of x equals and that would be our answer here and this was our answer for example three so one last topic to discuss here and that is where does e come from so like we memorize pi as being approximately 3.14 when we're working with these exponentials we need to memorize what e is approximately and it is approximately 2.718 and this discusses where it is obtained from. Uh, we're, we're not going to focus on that a lot. Mainly, uh, we built, will be working with uh, graphing uh, exponential functions with base e. And uh, that will uh, be a base of approximately 2.718. So that this is our first introduction in this unit to that. So the main thing is, just like you've memorized pi as being approximately 3.14, we want to memorize e as being approximately 2.718. So that's it for this video.